Well, hello, Diet Disruptors. Happy Monday. Uh, for those of you that are tuning in live, we are so excited to have you here. Those of you that are listening in on the podcast, we drop the podcast on Monday nights. So hello to you as well. But I have a special guest today. You haven't seen this girl in a while, this woman <laughs> in a while. This is Coach Shannon. Shannon, say hello. Hi, Diet Disruptors. Oh, I am so happy that you're here. Coach Shannon is one of the most special people in my life. Shannon and I have known each other for many, many years before, before she became a mom. Um, and really, we, we've just kind of lived on opposite sides of the world, but always stayed connected. And um, as a certified health coach, I knew that she was somebody that needed to be on our team. Mm -hmm. So um, whenever she is willing and available to coach with me on our live episode, I always want to take advantage of it. So in the comments, if you're watching live or if you've been watching on the replay, say hi to Shannon. Say, hey, Shannon. Those of you that may have remembered Shannon um, from other episodes, Shannon is a military spouse, but do you call yourself, is it like ex-military retired? Yes, I guess I'm, I, I, we're, I'm a retired military spouse. Right, so Shannon and I'm Dan. recently retired. Yes, they lived all over the world. You can say, thank you for your service in the comments. Uh, Dan is an amazing, amazing soldier and leader and he recently retired but Shannon and Dan have moved all over the world and Shannon has been completely uh, like a gypsy or <laughs> I mean for pretty much the whole time I've known you but really for the last year the right? last year we've been moving around a lot yes and then figuring out the whole transition where we're going to settle and yes it's been life's been crazy but good news is I will still be able to live my PFC every three life well, that, stay, I mean, that was the lifesaver. It kept me healthy and sane and mentally, you know, just, it was, I'm so glad to have this in my life. You know, I will say all day long, if Shannon can do it with her two boys, she homeschools as well and works and all of the things. And if they can do it, anybody can. And now you are settled in a new home. So congratulations for that. Thank you. Um, I, I love to see, I love to see this. So um, those of you that are watching, you can see the curly hair is is for me where it's like i just didn't have enough time to dry it this morning and <laughs> you've got <laughs> offices you've got the curly hair i've got the straight hair yeah. but, but my sister's like, hair is just like yours if i don't sit under my hair dryer i have a commercial hair dryer if i don't sit under it in the mornings before like a session like this you guys just get to see my wet head so that's what Love you it. get today keep but it real keeping it real right keeping it real yeah it's like, you know, life is what it is. All right. So all month long, we have this amazing series. Last week, we had Jennifer Marks on, who is a gluten-free health coach. And she taught us all about gluten and why it's an issue for you, for us. And I want to just kind of introduce and explain why we're doing this series right now before we dig into this topic. Um, and this topic was one where I was like, I can't give this up. I can't give this up. <laughs> so, uh, and, I, and I'm really excited to dig in. Shannon knows a ton about this, which is why I asked her to, to join us. But all month long, we're talking about eating clean. And so I, I, there should be no value set on food. Food is not good or bad. Food just is, right? And there's food that serves our body. And let's face it, there is food that serves our soul. And sometimes the food that serves our soul doesn't always serve our body. But one thing that I think all of our clients have learned is that there is a lot of soul-filling food that also serves your body. And I think that that's amazing. The thing is, if we don't really know what's causing issues in our body, then we never really can get to our optimal health. And there, all month long, we're going to talk about food that really doesn't serve our body, but we often keep having it. And a lot of us don't know it's not serving our body. And the reason we don't know is I say it's like a callus, you know, like I do strength training. And if I don't wear my gloves, I get this callus on my hands. And you know, sharp things could come towards my, on my hand and I don't really feel it because of that callus. And the longer we're eating in ways that don't serve our body, the more our body builds up this quote unquote callus. And it does it by producing fat cells. It does it by kind of giving us 
um, short, like over the long term, we start to feel like we have less energy, we have brain fog, we can't sleep, we don't necessarily feel it overnight, and we can't pinpoint it to any one thing. But those toxins, those foods that aren't serving our body are impacting us in ways that we can't really pinpoint because of the callus, which is amazing. And part of our four weeks to wellness lifestyle launch is when we, we serve our body by not including certain foods into our routine for just 28 days. So when we start to integrate them back in, we know what it is. Mm -hmm. It's like our body talks to us. It's really powerful. So this week we are going to dig into dairy. The thing that so many women say, oh, I can't give up cheese, right? So, so I love to say, it's not about giving up cheese. It's about serving your body for 28 days. But what do you say to people like that? Well, okay. So I will have to say that dairy is one thing that held me back from doing my very first four weeks to wellness. Oh, really? A little over two years ago. You know, I thought I can give up coffee because I have a replacement. I've got my tea replacement. I can yeah. give up wine because I can give up wine. I'll just have, you know, seltzer waters or whatever for that month. And, but the dairy, I mean, I ate Greek yogurt, like the pure 100%, you know, full fat Greek yogurt, which has sure. some health benefits, no sure. doubt. But I ate that like I was never going to have it again. Loved <laughs> cheese, loved cottage cheese, um, and just loved cheese in general. And so I thought, oh my gosh, that's going to be the hardest for me. Well, after doing, giving it up for, you know, four weeks, 28 days, it wasn't, it wasn't hard because there's so many other alternatives really that you can, totally. that you can have. And it was only for 28 days, right? You can do anything for 28 days. And then when I added it back in, then you realize some of the negative effects that it has on you. And you really um, make wiser choices of the cheeses that you do have. And I know we're going to talk about some of those today, so I won't jump to that just yet, yeah. but um, I can give so many um, other benefits, but it, um, the negative things that it really, um, I really think that that's what played such a huge part in my night sweats and my horrific menstrual cycles. And after reading the book, um, you know, just educating myself during the, the um, four weeks to wellness and then educating myself by reading that food, what the heck should I eat by Dr. Mark Hyman. He really, you know, from a scientific doctor perspective, really talks about why that is. And it does talk about those things in there and how it does have ne negative effects on our hormones in just huge ways. And so that's when I was able to, um, that also is a motivator to help me make wiser choices by only choosing goat cheese over regular cheese or choosing all the grass fed products versus just your regular organic. Even yeah. though organic is better than, than regular, but organic is kind of between your regular milks and your grass fed. So yep. if you have grass fed, it's always the better option. Obviously goats and sheep is the best option, but yeah. So I, it just, yeah. it, I learned a lot of how it was um, negatively impacted all of those, um, the, the hormones that women deal with. So, and I don't have that issue anymore, which yeah. is like a big win. It's huge. Life changing. Well you know what you're making me really remember and we're both educators shannon and i actually have we're teachers that's right? how we met exactly. that's <laughs> how we met right and so what we i always say when you know you can do and a lot of times we don't really understand why certain things are so problematic last week with our gluten episode we got so many comments that said oh my gosh could this be contributing to some of my menopausal kind of things. We just chalk it up to, well, it's menopause, it's getting old. Mm -hmm. and, and how many women in our programs feel amazing, even though they're going through menopause, right? And so a lot, everything we put in our body matters. And so what we want to do today is teach. We want you to feel educated, to understand wh what's going on with dairy, just like we did, what's going on with gluten? Why is it problematic? What can it do? And then what are some great alternatives? Now, I'm going to be really honest with you. I've got cottage cheese in my fridge. I have cheese in my fridge. I have yogurt in my fridge. But I understand really well my body. And I understand what I need, what it does for me, when to have it, when not to have it. And I also know that if I'm going to have dairy, I'm going to break out in a zit the next day. <laughs> and sometimes the ice cream is worth it. But I, I, I always say to women, whenever I do talk around the, the country and I say, what do you need to do to get healthy? Women will always say nutrition, exercise, drink water, like yoga, all of those things. Nobody ever says self-awareness. 
And I, we know that in our, in our programs, it is all about mindset and self-awareness on top of the food. But today there's going to be a lesson in self-awareness because I want you to be starting to think about what some of these foods might actually be doing for you. And then when you are more aware, you can just make better choices, right? Um, I have this little quote. It's, I love this. Um, it's a little sticker. We always send stickers to our clients. It says, self-consciousness is a disease. Self-awareness is health. Love it. Right? So we don't want to be self-conscious. We want to be aware and we want to learn. So Shannon, let's dig into why is dairy so doggone difficult for us? Well, I mean, I think one of the main reasons is because of all the, um, the way that the cows are fed, you know, it's, they're not grass fed, they're fed, um, you know, grains and soy and just things that, um, are not necessarily, good for us and so yeah. what obviously we are what we eat so when they are fed those things and then we consume the products like the milks and the cheeses and the cottage cheeses and all that that come from it then we are getting those added hormones that we don't need and something that really stood out to me is with dairy cows for example you know they're in a business right so um and not all dairy farms are run this way but some are where they literally when that mom has that baby calf they take it away they and and the cows are the one animal that still need to feed off their mom, right? Where, whereas, you know, once we're two, we should really no longer need um, milk products in a sense to thrive. So, um, and they take that and then they, they're they just um, pumped with all these, or they're, you know, taking the milk and we're getting all the hormones from these cows. And then it's just affecting us negatively with acne, horrible menstrual cycles, you know, bringing on um, an onset of um, menopausal, symptoms that really come on too soon or um just a variety of negative things which impact us from the inside out yeah and let's I, I love that you brought up the calves because one of the things so milk uh cows are born right and 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 yes how our cows how all of our animals are fed matters right mm. so much and so we have to recognize that so there's two things to think about with dairy i think one is how is it produced? How are the animals fed that of where we're getting the dairy from? But then there's still regardless an issue with dairy, regardless yeah. of how the animal is being fed. But let, I want you to think about this. I took some notes so that we could like, I could be really consistent and clear with people, but I want you to think about what dairy from a cow, a sheep, even goat's milk, right? What it's meant to do is it's designed to help little mammals like calves mm -hmm. grow fast, right? Yes. So that growth factor found in milk and in milk products and those dairies, um, along with kind of some inflammatory factors and things like that, don't actually do an adult good. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing how animals have been put on this earth for a reason to help us, right? But we actually lost the ability to truly digest dairy when we were two, because it has a lot of the growth hormones in it to help us grow in those really early years, just like calves, just like babies. But after that, we don't need that stuff as adults. And there's this whole thing about calcium when it comes from milk, but really it's very, very, very little. It is not actually worth it. And the, the damaging pieces are way out why we can get so much more calcium in other food, but- Vegetables, yes. Oh my gosh, without a doubt. Vegetables, sardines. There's so many other you know things, ways you can get much more calcium. And I think so, one thing I didn't mention earlier is that your, um, your average cow milk it is very, like, it's very infl infl inflammatory. It causes a lot of inflammation it, absolutely. in the gut. And we just can't, adults can't digest. They just can't, we can't digest it. So it causes so many digestive issues. Yes, um, that lactose. And that's why that's the if you are going to have a source of milk, yes, yes. So we all actually have some form of lactose intolerance because our bodies just aren't made to, to digest it. Now, some obviously have it more than others. They have a true allergy to it, yep. but we all have some form of it. So it does cause a little bit of inflammation. That's why if you're going to have a form of animal's milk, um, you need it to be from a sheep or a goat because they do not have, um, I can't remember the exact term, like 
I think it's the A1 casein that mm -hmm. maybe the, the um, I think the goats, the sheep only have that A2 casein. So that our bodies can digest a lot better and it's not as in, inflammatory. So right, just something right. to keep in mind. It, it doesn't cause yeah. that discomfort that cow's milk causes. And we talk about blood sugar stabilization all the time, right? And we talk about eating in threes, protein, fat, and carb. Every time we eat, it is so powerful. It is so freeing. It is so amazing. And let's be honest, dairy is a, uh, can be a fat and a, a bit of a protein and all of that. So it's not to say it doesn't have those qualities, but I want you to think about like lactose actually has a really high insulin response. And so that high insulin response can be very, like you said, inflammatory in our bodies. And mm -hmm. so it promotes disorders or promotes issues. I shouldn't say disorders, but issues like obesity and diabetes. Right. And so those kinds of things, but I, I, we just gotta, we gotta balance, right? If that's not serving your body and you're doing it every single day, you're putting yourself at risk, but we talk about everything in moderation, but we don't know what that means, but this is a really good example of how, for me, I know dairy, what it's going to do to me, but there's still times I make the decision to do it. But if I was doing that every single day, Think about how that callus gets built and your body protects yourself with, with, with adding fat cells and um, all of the other pieces that the, the issues, right. That, you know, are being affected by food, like sleep, like energy, all of that over time that translates into obesity, diabetes, and a variety of other health issues. And that was me. I had dairy every day of some form. I didn't drink. I'd already was drinking almond milk, but still I had some form of dairy, whether it be cottage cheese or milk or cheese every day, almost because, you yeah. know, you, I thought I was doing well for my body by having that healthy, you know, Greek yogurt. Um, right. But now I know that I need to have it in moderation and I just make wiser choices by only right. buying the grass fed. Or right. The because if, it's, if it's that daily, if that, that daily piece is what's really important, because think about like that growth factor from zero to two, right. Babies, calves, or, you know, calves when they're really little, right. they they need that milk to grow quickly, but that's unregulated cell growth. If we have that going on in our bodies as adults, it's actually known to be a cause of cancer. It's actually known to be a cause of so many other factors that we hormones can be completely out of whack. So if you're doing dairy every day, then we really want you to recognize again, the why, when you know you can do, right? Um, mm -hmm. and you, you talk about the casein in there, right? Mm -hmm. And that is a huge inflammatory. That's why what you were saying about goat's milk and all of that, the type of casein that's there is different, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that that's important, but it's also been attached to increased risk of autoimmune disease. Do you know how many women I, I talk to I that come to us that have autoimmune diseases and then they feel unbelievably better after just working with us for 28 days? Yes. And then they continue down the path and understand it is a matter of life and death for some of these women around this kind of stuff and that quality of life. And if we can make some no brainer swaps, it's so much better. Now, I always say every time I have dairy, whether it's ice cream or cottage cheese or anything, I get acne mm -hmm. that think about like weight gain is a, a condition of a result of health and hormones. Acne is inflammation. Right. And that's a reaction to you of what something that's going on in your body, but asthma, acne, seasonal allergies, allergies, allergies and ear infections that really got my attention. And because I, we knock on wood, because I hate to even say this out loud, but we very rarely have sinus infections anymore that we used to get. Now we have seasonal allergies, but they don't get severe like they used to. My son went through, I mean, we had issues. I wish I would have known this when my boys were much younger. They're 11 now because one of them had constant repeating ear infections. And I just wonder, I know some of it had to do with the climate of where we live, but I do wonder if some had to do with the milk. Shannon, that is a huge point. We are not doing this just for ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Uh, what do I have? What does it say behind here? Know your value. I want everybody to write in the comment, Mom fluencer. Yes. You're not, we are all, all of us that have K 
kids, right? Our grandkids. Grandkids. I don't even care if you have nieces or nephews. Okay. You're an aunt fluencer. You're a grandma fluencer. You're a mom fluencer. Write what you are in the comments. Which influencer are you? Because if we know better, it's not just about ourselves. Y'all, it's not about you being able to fit into your bikini this summer. Well, I get it. It feels good to have that. <laughs> we know a lot of skinny, unhealthy people. When we can change our family tree, not we, we talk about wanting to make more money so we can give our kids the life that we didn't have. This is the money. This is the life. This is what we can teach our kids. How much different will your kids grow up knowing what we're teaching now than what you knew? and how different their mindsets will be. When they understand that food is fuel and they understand that there's food that serves their body and there's food that serves their soul and how to make the different the choice between the two, that's life-changing for them. Yes. All right, so we know some of the reasons why dairy is problematic, right? We also know that, you know, there's so, so much more out there today than there was even five years ago. I will tell you like people in our community at the end of 28 days, when they move on to continue with us and in, in our programming and understand how to integrate food back in, they're like, I can't believe I'm not even craving cheese. Yeah, I know. Because there's so many very cool alternatives. So we're going to talk about some of those. I'm going to first talk about clarified butter. And I, I love that. And I, I'm going to read to you actually a little bit about clarified butter. You might find it in your grocery store as ghee. Yes, Do you have, yeah, you, Shannon has some there. Okay. Yeah. So she's going to show those of you that are watching, you can see if you're on the podcast, you can't see it, but we'll put some links in the notes and about really where to find it. It's really yummy, especially <laughs> like put a little bit for a fried egg. Oh, so good. And you guys, let me tell you about this. So plain old butter, okay, has those milk proteins that we've been talking about, even if it's grass fed, right? So if you can, if you really love butter and you can make some no brainer swaps, it's like what I say about wine, you could drink wine and get all the crap in it, or you could drink clean crafted wine, like what we talk about all the time, and know that you're still drinking wine, you're, you know, you're, you're just drinking wine without all of that crap in it, why not make a no brainer swap? swap? That's how I feel about butter, about clarified butter. Um, so clarified butter, and I kind of wrote all of this out so I could make sure I share with you exactly how the technique is. It's a technique of simmering butter slowly at a low temperature and it separates the milk solids from the pure butter oil. The end result is a dairy-free fat. It's perfect for flavoring dishes, cooking. You can use it as a butter alternative. My kids don't even know the difference. I know. I know. They don't even know the difference. So ghee, G-H-E-E, -E, is a different, is a form of clarified butter. Um, it, it's, it's actually simmered a little bit longer. Um, so it becomes, it kind of has like a little bit of a sweeter, maybe a nuttier flavor. So you could do clarified butter straight or ghee. My grocery store only had ghee mine. That's what, that's what we use. Um, and so it's a great way for you to be able to, to make a swap. I will say like two years ago, you don't think you could, a year ago, I don't think you, a lot of us could have found ghee maybe a year ago, but now you, you should be able to find it in any grocery store. Yes. Right. Give me something else, Shannon. Okay. So, um, goat's milk. I know we've talked about that. Now goat's cheese is my all time favorite. And so that was, a, it means a huge swap for me. I liked goat cheese anyway, but now I just pretty much all that I buy, unless I find a good quality grass fed and, you know, for just some certain recipes when I can't find a goat's, a goat's milk in that um, cheese. Anyway, but goat's milk. So I, this is a powdered one, but I just always keep this on hand. I usually have the can of the liquid because some recipes, you just can't use your almond milk is just not quite the same but this is like, has that thicker consistency like milk and it's so good. And if I ever, I don't have coffee very often, but when I do, I just put that goat's milk in it. I'll just keep it in the fridge in a little small can. And it's so good. You would not really know the difference. I'm drinking and, coffee right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there you go. But the thing about it is um, it has the, what is it? The MCTs, that medium chain triglycerides in yep. it. Yeah. And which boost metabolism yes. and, MCT oil helps is brain awesome. and helps with brain function. So yes. there are benefits to the goats and sheep milk. And yep. those are two. And of, that's and a perfect example. 
like for 28 days, yes, we do want to eliminate because then when we add it back in, our bodies are get rid of that callus, right? And then we can, they talk to us more effectively. And then you can try goat's milk and see how that's reacting, right? But because you're, you're talking about something with a different type of casein and a different, it might still be inflammatory for you, right? Yeah. And if that's the case, you'll know. But if you want a better swap, then go for that. Like you said, almond milk, which isn't really a milk, it's not a dairy, yeah. might not cut it for some of you, right? Exactly. Um, I'll Another... just share my screen, Shannon, real quick, because- Okay. Uh, oh, this is our favorite book. I will pull this yes. up. Food, What the Heck Should I Eat? We love Dr. Mark Hyman. Follow him if you don't already. But I'm also going to pull up these nut pods. We found these. Somebody found oh, these yeah. in our group. This is dairy-free. It's creamer. It's got almost like nothing in it. It's so good. I use my frother. I heat it up a little bit. I use my frother and I froth it. It's super frothy. And then I'll put and, that in my coffee sometimes. I use a variety coffee. of flavors. So you can try them all Yeah, and see which one you like the best. And I like how they come out with seasonal ones for like pumpkin around, the, you know, the things. Pumpkin one is good. I usually like the regular. I don't love like the flavored stuff, but I um, uh, often do my coffee black. But sometimes if I want that cr creamy feeling. Right, I then can. you'll add the nut pods. Yeah. So yeah. one other swap that I like to do is that I had never, I'd only used the recipe my whole life, which was a particular cookie recipe until I did the four weeks to wellness. And then now I use it all the time. Nutritional yeast. Oh, so and talk about, this is like a power food. It, it, first of all, like if you look at all the vitamins that are in this, like it yeah. is loaded with just tons of, um, of good stuff. It's a complete protein. I know if we're like two tablespoons, it has five grams of protein. This particular one, I've noticed that they vary a little bit. They do. So, you know, you always have to, to read your nutritional labels. But um, I started using this to sprinkle on all of my veggies. You know, like if I'm roasting broccoli or, um, you know, onions with um, zucchini and squash, or whatever, I just sprinkle it on there along with my little salt and pepper because it just gives it a yummy flavor. I, during the four weeks of wellness, when I was completely eliminating, you know, all dairy, I use this in my omelets and everything. And even my boys, they're 11 and they will shake this stuff on our pasta now. Like this is on pasta night, this is on the table instead of Parmesan cheese. I mean- <laughs> that amazing and, and it's like your boys are being raised that way now so it's not like later after 25 years of living a certain way they have to then switch their own mindset and it's harder right yeah. about it's like teaching old dog new tricks and exactly. it's harder and i'm not so, saying yeah. that we never have parmesan cheese yeah. but very rarely do i buy it i don't buy it. it used to always be in there right in the refrigerator now it's just for certain recipes and then we'll have it until it's eaten up and then I'll buy it sometime later. But anyways, nutritional yeast, highly recommend trying it. Um, now I don't sit there and just eat it by itself. I sprinkle it on things, you know, I cook with it in my food, it's great in soups, stews, excellent on popcorn. If you eat popcorn, um, yeah. that's something, you know, we avoid during the four weeks to wellness, but if you have popcorn, it's so good on popcorn. Right. And that's one thing we'll talk about corn and, and problems with corn and all that kind of stuff. But um, yes. Okay. Awesome. Shannon. I love that. Um, there's also, uh, I, we have a little gift for everybody that's been, uh, just hanging out with us and wants to know more about this. Shannon and I, when we were preparing for our episode, she was like, there is a recipe that is my absolute favorite <laughs> dairy free recipe that is so, last night. And so yummy. So y'all know we have our recipe subscription. Our members are automatically get our recipe subscription, but we only open our subscription up twice a year because we are busy making recipes. Uh, and so we open up our subscription twice a year. We know that there's so many healthy recipes out there, quote unquote healthy, but they're almost always not balanced. They're almost always not PFC balanced. I just saw a recipe the other day that was like six times the amount of fat we should have in a recipe. It was so, so crazy. And it was like eight times more carbs than we should have in a meal. And I'm like, but this is, it was in a clean eating magazine, right? And so no wonder people are confused, but I would have loved to not have to make a recipe subscription because it's hard work because we literally make sure every recipe is PFC balanced. And we try to make as many as we can completely clean and compliant with the four weeks to wellness, because why not? If you can do something and it's great and it's completely clean, that would be awesome. So Shannon, we are going to give everybody Shannon's favorite recipe. I what is it, it Shannon? It is coconut lime chicken. Delicious. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uses, it uses the coconut um, 
coconut milk, like the canned coconut milk, the organic coconut milk, which is actually challenge compliant. So even when we're doing the four weeks to wellness, we can have this recipe. It is, yes. I mean, it's amazing. The Look what I right here. It says, this will go down as one of my favorite <laughs> meals I ever made. Well, it is. And my boys request it all the time. And one requested it last night. And I normally, I've learned, I double the recipe because everybody wants leftovers the next day. It's one of those recipes that even gets better. So you can make it that morning to even have that night. So yes, it's oh, like so good. Creamy, so once you make it, please post a picture in the diet, just, you know, in this page, in the group, yeah. in the diet service group so that we can see, let us know if you like it. Yes. So I, I love that. So I want you to write coconut lime chicken. If you want the coconut lime chicken recipe, I will make sure I post it after this. It's so, so yummy. And it's a really good example of some of the recipes that we have in the subscription. If you are interested in the subscription, when it opens, we will open it for like four days only in July. Then you can go to disruptivenutrition.com slash recipe waitlist. And we'll send you a few extra recipes too, so that you can get them. And then we'll tell you when the recipe subscription is open, but we'll post this. We'll post it a few times during the week, but yes, I would say make the recipe this week and then post it and tell us how it feels to be dairy free for that meal. Right. Love it. So Shannon, I'm so excited. Uh, we talk a lot about the four weeks to wellness and as much as it's our favorite thing, we don't offer it all the time. So you, people will have to wait until the fall when we open that up again, but I want you to wrap your head around how you're going to serve your body and then be ready to jump into our forwards to wellness at the summer's over. And you're going to be able to really serve your body. Well, um, you can go to 4w2w.com to find out more info. Um, but what we really want to do for this whole summer is just give you tips, give you strategies. So you can do little things. Mark McDonald, my good friend and our celebrity nutritionist and partner always says 1% progress. And so do a little bit every day and you're going to start to see a difference and then be ready to jump in with us in the fall and be ready to commit to yourself. So get yourself psyched up for that. Shannon, go, go. I was going to say, try some of these substitutes, like, you know, yes. Just, yes. And that'll be your 1% progress. Replace yes. goat's milk or goat's cheese with your brie for your brie or whatever it may be, or even grass fed, you know, something from your regular. Yeah. Um, we did not talk about, we did not touch on why you really need to stay away from the one and the 2% milk versus the whole milk. If you're oh. going to have milk at all, because the, it'll say, Oh, vitamins A and D, which they do fortify that with vitamins A and D. However, your body cannot digest the vitamins A and D without fat. So if they, and they've taken all the fat out of those milks, so you're not getting, you're not properly getting those um, vitamins anyway, because you don't have the fat to digest them. So yeah. if you're going to have milk, go for the full fat. Yes. And of course, grass fed, but goat's milk is even better. A hundred percent. Same with yogurt. Zero percent fat yogurt. You guys, fat is there. So it tastes your friend. good. Your friend. <laughs> and there's so much like we need the fat. Fat is our friend. And if we take it out, think about it. They have to put something in to make it taste good. And what they put in is not going to serve your body. So if you are going to do yogurt, like we have yogurt in our fridge and a couple of times a week, it's a great PFC by itself. If, if you don't have too many sugars and, 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 and it's the right kind, but also recognize that I always get full fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, Shannon, that was a good little tidbit we forgot to put in there. Okay. So um, you guys write in the comments, dairy free. If you're going to try to do some dairy free options this week, put it in there, comment on what you thought about this. Let us know if you have any questions right after we get off, I will throw this recipe in the group. So if you're not a diet disruptor, because you're watching this on YouTube or watching this in our Facebook page, get to our diet disruptor squad Facebook group. So you can get this recipe. Absolutely. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye. Have a great day.